Hi everybody, today we are going to make a vintage mini zine. If you don't want to make a mini zine, you can turn this into four separate art journal pages. Always an option. So I'm working on an 11 by 17 copy paper and I'm folding it in half both ways and then into eighths and I'm using the bone folder to get a sharp edge. I want to know roughly where the pages are going to be. Now, if you want to turn this into a master board, you can do exactly the same thing, except don't fold the paper. Then you have four master boards that you can cut and, and use as Insta backgrounds. I want to give this copy paper some stability and I want to keep my options open for what kind of techniques I want to use. So I'm giving it a coat of white gesso. And the fastest way to get that on is to brayer it on. So I grab my speedball brayer and away I go. This gives stability and texture. This is one of my newest stamps and I absolutely love it for its vintage feel and its usability. It's called Numbers and it's from Chow Bella. This stamp set, as well as all the stamps that I use, in the creation of this masterboard slash background came from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box below. I absolutely love this stamp set and I am stamping with black acrylic paint that I am brayering on. This stamp set would be great for making your own vintage tissue papers, collage papers that you can add to any page. When you use, when you stamp with black acrylic paint as opposed to ink, you get a little bit of texture and I also find you get a darker image. Now I've switched to this Stamperia stamp set. It's called Clocks and Borders. And again, to me, it just really reads vintage. I want to get lots of interest into the background. Now I'm going to colorize my background, but I want to see everything that's there. So I am using a very light color. I am using unbleached titanium and white gesso with a little bit of, I believe that's burnt umber in there. I knew that I wanted to go vintage and more neutral in the background. I'm watering down the paint a little bit because I want to see all that stamping. I'm okay with pushing it back. That's why I wanted it bold black. So I could still see it even though I am going to add more. Now I'm adding a little bit of alizarin crimson just to colorize the background and I'm just rubbing it here and there. I'm not trying to think too much about what I'm doing. I'm just trying to enjoy the process. FYI, at the end of the video, I'll be using my art journal process, prompt and process cards to recap all the steps. I want to add more patterns, so I grab this stencil. The link, the name of it will be in the description box below. And I stenciled that with white as well as the alizarin crimson. Stenciling with white on top of things really gives an interesting effect. It is definitely something that you should give a try. You're very quite happy with it. I've added a little bit of gray blue here. Just want to introduce more color to the background. At this point, I have no idea what focal points I'm going to do or where I'm going. And then I grabbed this layered wallpaper stencil, one of my favorite stencils for vintage. It's again, one of those highly usable stencils. You will not 
regret purchasing this one because it is so usable. And I'm stenciling on and it's very muted and I'm not exactly happy with it. But night fell and then the next day is a new day and when I went back to my studio, I decided I needed to add a little bit more color, a little more blue. So I grabbed my Prussian blue and I'm adding water to it on a piece of acetate. This is just from packaging that I've saved. And I am going to smoosh. And I've got a big blob there, which at this point in time, I'm going, ooh, I don't know if I really like that. But I just keep going. And you can see how adding that bright color just brought this background to life. So I'm giving that a dry. And then I'm going to add more color to the background. This time I grab that alizarin crimson. I want, I'm liking the watercolory, flowy, unplanned look of smooshing. Every time I do smooshing, I, I think, why do I not do more of this? Because it does give you that watercolor look. It does give you just an amazing effect. Like I'm absolutely loving the effect. A big tip here, add a little bit more water. With the red here, I've the paint was a little too thick and you get more the dendritic patterning than the watercolor look that I got with the blue. And I really like that watercolory effect better. After thinking about it, I decided I wanted to add some yellow in here and I grabbed yellow oxide. Now I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm not a fan of yellow and really I wasn't either, but every page looks so much better when it's got some yellow on it. And basically here I've just used the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue on an otherwise neutral background. That's why it works. So whether you've decided to, to make this as a master board or whether you've decided to intentionally make a mini zine as I am, you got to admit this background is to die for. Now these colors are getting, in my mind, a little bit bright. And if you're not happy with something, all that means is you're not done. That means you've got to layer it up. And there are so many layers on this background. Now I'm folding it up just to take a peek of what my pages are kind of looking like. Then I decide, well, I need to add some script. So this is Darkroom Door Elegant Script. And I'm stamping. and. By accident, I grabbed my blue archival ink instead of my black. So it's a lot more muted than what I was going for. I wanted to add black contrast, but you know what? It was a happy accident. So I'm really liking it, but I'm still thinking that something's missing. So I look at my stencils and I grabbed this linked tiles stencil and white paint and I'm stenciling over and I'm trying to target some of those bigger splotches, the blue, the pink. And this is adding a very subtle pattern, but it's just made the page in my mind. Link Tiles, by the way, is another one of those all time favorite stencils.
And here I talked earlier about stenciling with white. It just, it just made this page in my mind. It's subtle, but it is quite the workhorse. Holding it up to see what my pages are going to going to look like. And getting ready to turn it into a zine. I cut from the middle the folded side and then smoosh it together and I'm forming the booklet. I'm just kind of working it, getting the folds in the right place. You got to play with it a little bit to get everything to line up. And once I think I have it fairly close, and you know what, I'm not going for perfect, I open it up, flip it to the back, and I'm adding a layer of glue stick. You have to work pretty quick here because you need to fold it together and get everything to adhere properly before the glue dries. So I do play with this a bit to make sure that everything's on. I'm looking at the edges, making sure that everything is glued together properly. Take the time to set yourself up for success using a bone folder just to make sure everything is perfectly adhered and the folds are crisp. Trying to decide which one's going to be the front. Loving the pages, how they turned out. Now decided at this point, I'm going to edge the pages and I've decided to turn this into four larger spreads as opposed to eight separate pages. If I was going to do separate pages, I would also edge down that middle to separate the pages. So I go and I keep turning the pages and I edge it using that blender, the Ranger blending foam. As a focal image, I went through my stencils and picked out some focal image stencils like this wheat stalks stencil. And I decided to use black acrylic paint. This is giving us lots of contrast. There's not a lot of black in the background. Remember that when I grabbed the blue ink instead of the black? And that's why the black is really showing up. This one's called Faithful Tree. I also pick stencils that have wider spaces, so you get a lot of contrast. Using black here allows for the background to really shine through. You're not competing color on color. I was going to use the sunflower one. Decided to use this butterfly from this dragonfly collage stencil. This was going to be my front with half the butterfly on one side and half of it on the back. And then I changed my mind. because it turned out it was such a lovely full spread. I can't tell you how much I love that background. This one's called Magnolia Blossoms, and I'm just using this bottom part. You can select which one. You can build up your composition however you see fit. Here I'm using three 12 inch stencils and one of the six inch stencils. The focal image stencils that I buy are ones that I know I'm going to get a lot of use of. They are things that I love, like butterflies, magnolias, wheat, things that 
mean something to me. Now I want to pick a sentiment, so I'm going through my sentiment book. I print out all my sentiments and keep them in these page protectors. Then I can easily flip through, find the one I want. Then I go to my little plastic envelopes where I keep the extras, flip through there to see if one of the quotes that I'm looking for is there. And then I cut them down to size. Many times I eliminate a lot of the white and I go in increments. I remove the most of it and then I fine tune it. Cutting away more of the white. And if it's a script font that I've used, I often bubble cut around it. This gets rid of the, a lot of that excess white and just looks better to me. But if you like it the other way, leave it as a, as a rectangle. Once I've set it up, I take a picture and then I can do all my cutting in one at one time. I'm gluing it all these all the sentiments down with fluid matte medium. You can use a glue stick if you want or gel medium if that's what you have. Now each page in this book, I've tried to set up the composition different. I want to build in variety. I'm arranging the sentiments differently as well because I want to build interest into them. And you can see each of these would be perfectly great as a standalone art journal page. Now this one, I decided that instead of putting it in a block at the bottom, I'm cutting it apart. It just looks better and fits those the curve of that wheat stalk. And again, I want to make every page, every sentiment differently. If you haven't bought digital uh, sentiments, you might want to check out my digital sentiments at ninniesnapkins.com. They're fully resizable. I have a video showing you how to do that. And you can print them off as many times as you want. Now for this one, because this is what I've chosen to be the cover, so it's a front and a back, I picked a two-part phrase. So when it's open like this, it works together as one page. And when it's closed, we still have the full sentiment on the one side that makes sense. But you could put two different sentiments that are related on here. I grab my Posca, my black Posca pen, and I've decided to outline the blocks of sentiments. I don't go around the script ones, and I'm edging the page with the pen as well. This Posca pen's just about out of ink, so it ended up in the garbage can, and I grabbed a brand new one, and very quickly you're going to see how much easier it is. This was kind of fighting me a little bit. Time to buy a new one. The Posca pens, if you're curious, are permanent when they're dry. The sentiment pack, if I mentioned it, this is, it's about time sentiment pack. So here is the finished book. I hope you love it as much as I do. I absolutely love that background. You can see every layer is still visible in parts. Love the white stenciling here, how that just made that page. Making a promise to myself to use more smooshing to get that watercolor effect. 
the randomness of smooshing. Which page is your favorite? So I started by stamping with black acrylic paint. I wanted to keep those images really dark because I knew I was gonna put paint on them and push them back a little bit, but I still wanted to see them. I applied a base coat of color using unbleached titanium and white gesso, a little bit of brown. Then I added a little pink and a little bit of gray blue. I stenciled then with the Mandela stencil and the layered wallpaper stencil. I assembled my book and I edged the page. I added more color by smooshing. That gave a watercolor effect and a, a randomness that I really, really love. Then I did more stenciling with white acrylic paint on top. It broke up some of that color and really made the page. I did more stenciling for the focal images and I used black to build contrast and to make that focal image stand out against the background, but not compete with it. I added the sentiment to the page, outlined the sentiment, could have splattered with gold, might still do that. Close-ups follow. Let me know which page was your favorite. Now, turn off the video and go get creative.